All right, um, I've uh, finally made a oscillator circuit that's actually seriously stable in the LaserDisc player. Um, I'm using a um, rubidium-based um, frequency standard to do my measurements. So my frequency here is supposed to be 14 318 plus or minus one. So the accuracy is supposed to be right here. Um, and then that it could be within tolerance if it was 7 or 9. So 31818. Now if you do the math real carefully and you figure out what the number should actually be, it's supposed to be 14318 um, It drifts a little bit, but not very much. And um, this makes it just unbelievably stable. Um, and magnitudes better accuracy, short term and long term, um, than what was than the than the horrible drift that the player normally has. Um, the player normally has from uh, hot to cold. Um, I could see I can see it get up to three one eight three. So just magnitudes different. Um, so there you have it, 3181818. That's extreme accuracy. So I'm not done yet. I need to put the, I've temporarily, I'm doing kind of an R&D thing with the module right now. You can see the oscillator sort of on this side. There's an adjustment here for doing, um, doing precise adjustments. There's also the voltage regulator and some other stuff that's just kind of, you know, wired to the board right now. Of course, you know, you get all this cleaned up, which I'm going to do, that's going to end up being, you know, even more accurate once I get it all the way in there. Um, so, yeah, this is quite a bit of work. There's a precision voltage reference in there. The voltage, the power supply for the, for the oscillator is being generated by a DC to DC converter, so it's completely isolated. Um, it's using temperature compensated resistors um, and a pot, a 25 turn pot, in order to regulate the voltage to the oscillator chip. The oscillator chip's down here, and it's actually a 10 parts per million um, oscillator chip by Abracom, so it's also extremely accurate as well. So, um, all together, that's pretty darn ridiculous. And it shows in the picture. The main change in the picture, actually, I think was generated because um, it turns out that this is generating a square wave um, rather than a sine wave that the crystal circuit did. And the square wave seems to have made a huge difference in the jitter being produced by the by the machine. So now the laser disc player is just far, far more stable and it's improved the picture in a whole bunch of different ways. Also improved the sound somehow or another. So that that's kind of all profound. So that's that's the newest change. Um, I'm waiting on some uh, slightly better precision voltage reference that I'm going to use in some 0.01% uh, um, resistors um, with better temperature uh, compensation that I'm going to use as well to just really make it, you know, just completely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, the, the stability is just really remarkable. Um, it just sits at about 1.8 to 2.0 um, constantly. So it's really, really, really become stable, um, which is which is really just awesome. Um, you can't really see the, the video amp circuit. It's, it all, it's placed where it needs to be. You can't see some of the special wiring that I did, um, creating LITS wire to bring the signal in, um, which was interesting that I had to do that. But um, but yeah, this, this I was really happy with. This made an amazing difference I wasn't expecting. Um, amazing what jitter does in a clock. Um, anyway, so that's the the most current um, the most current change to the laser disc player. Hyper accuracy in the master clock.